Hey there, and welcome to Breakfast with Mark Daniels for Tuesday, January 28th, 2020. Weather for Long Island looks like temperatures will be in the upper 30s to around 40 Tuesday through Friday and nighttime lows 25 to 30. We stay dry through the rest of the work week. What's so special about today? Well, today is (laughs) National Kazoo Day. I always found them to be terribly annoying, but if you like them, toot away. Today is also National Have Fun at Work Day. I hope your boss was made aware of this one. And finally, it's National Plan for Your Next Vacation Day. Nothing warms the heart better at the end of January than planning for your summer vacation. Price and availability are at their best, so start planning. And now on to kids. I know it's always a big challenge for parents. It certainly was a big challenge for my wife and myself to get our kids to eat the right foods, healthier foods like fruits and vegetables, all the stuff that kids usually avoid. I saw this on CNN. It's a way to get your kids to eat healthier, and that is to have them watch more TV. Now, we're not talking shows like Peppa Pig, Sesame Street, SpongeBob, Dora the Explorer, or Bubble Guppies. We're talking cooking shows, shows that feature healthy foods. The study was published in the Journal of Nutrition, Education, and Behavior, and it found that kids who watched a cooking program that featured these healthy foods were more than twice as likely to choose them for a snack than kids who watched a show featuring unhealthy foods. I wouldn't sit them down in front of the Food Network to have them watch Cake Boss, Cake Hunters, Cake Masters, Cake Wars, or Cake Off. Shows like All Star Get Healthy Tips and Healthy Eats for Kids, both on the Food Network. And here's how they came to their conclusion. They had one group of kids watching a food show with healthy snacks and healthy foods, and then they had another group of kids watching a show with not-so-healthy foods. At the end of the show, they told both groups of kids to have a snack as a reward, and they put out various snacks. The kids that watched the healthy show were twice as likely as the kids who watched the unhealthy food show to select a healthy treat. And I'm sure it has a lot to do with parenting as well. If a kid sees a dad or a mom burying their hand in a big bag of chips, chances are they're going to do the same. However, if they see mom and dad munching on a crunchy celery stick, they will probably, but I can't guarantee, will do the same. The Food Network wasn't around when I was a kid, and I think the only cooking show was on Channel 13, and it was really slow and really good if you want to put your kid to sleep. The only show I had was my mom. I'd watch her cook and eat shrimp, steak, lamb, beef, pork, any kind of fish. Sometimes I didn't even know what kind of fish it was. And other parts and things that I don't even remember. She would just pretty much hold it up in front of my face and say, hey, try it. Most of the time I did. So that's how I attribute my wide palate because I used to watch my mom's cooking show. So next time your kids want to watch TV or TV at dinner for that matter, Make sure you put on a healthy cooking show and see what happens. And I wish you a lot of luck. So I was feeling socially awkward last night at dinner. Oldfields Barbecue opened a brand new place on Old Town Road and 25A in Setauket a couple of weeks ago. And I wanted to go because there's not really too many barbecue places near me. This was perfect. The food was absolutely awesome. The service was absolutely awesome. This is Texas style barbecue right here in Suffolk County, New York. When we pulled into the parking lot, it was obvious this place was hopping. But as luck would have it, and I never have this kind of luck, I found a parking spot right in the front row. But as we're getting out of the car, I could see people streaming into the restaurant. I knew it was probably going to be a wait, but we didn't even have to wait. Now, you don't sit down like you normally do in traditional restaurants and place your food order. No, the host or hostess, as you come in, has you select whatever it is you want. It's on a board right behind him or her. Once you've placed your order, they place you at a table. We were placed at a table that was closest to the line that was forming to come in. And normally, I would have said, no, I'll wait for a better table. But since our seats were far enough away from the line, we were kind of recessed up against a window, which was fine to me, as long as I didn't have to talk to somebody's back. So here's what happened. We placed our order, we were seated, and the food comes out. Now, I'm eating things like ribs and onion rings, which were absolutely delicious. But you know, with this kind of food, it's hands and mouth. And I often try to avoid that kind of food when I go to a restaurant. God forbid I should run into anyone. Well, I ran into everyone. 
Friends and neighbors would come over to me just as I'm ripping into a rib with my incisors, and they'd say, "Hey, how are you? Good to see you." <laughs> and since we were so close to that line, every single person that knew myself, my wife, or my daughter, and yes, we were all recognized, had to come over and say something. And I know they meant it out of the goodness of their hearts, being social. But I can tell you, it is embarrassing when I have rib meat in my teeth and barbecue sauce on my cheek. A couple of guys I knew extended their hand to shake hands, and I held mine up and I said, "Well, give me ten minutes." But that's what you have to expect when you go to a Texas-style barbecue. It's a lot of fun, no doubt. I just think next time, perhaps I'll take that little table in the corner in the back. So the other day, I was going through some pictures, and I came across some birthday pictures of both my son Mark and my son Brian. We had taken them to a place to have the birthday party, as we often did when the kids were little. And this place happened to be a place that I loved, and I know my kids loved. And it was Sports Plus in Lake Grove, right near the Smith Haven Mall. If you had kids in the late '90s and early 2000s, chances are your kids probably had a birthday party at Sports Plus. There were all kinds of swirly rides, and they had all kinds of games. And best of all, your kids maybe you had twelve to fourteen kids at a birthday party. They put you in a room, long table. Out comes the pizza. Everybody's happy. Great party. We'd even go there if there wasn't a birthday party, just for something to do. I also saw a Facebook post on the page. Hey, Long Island, do you remember? We mentioned it here on Breakfast with Mark Daniels a couple of days ago, and the post was name a business. That is no longer on Long Island, and better yet, a business that's no longer on Long Island that you miss. Sports Plus was definitely on the top of my list because it was a fun thing to do. Also on the top of my list, right across the street, was Sports Authority. I bought my son his first sleeping bag there for Boy Scouts. And then remember this gem? Crazy Eddie's Double Barrel Grand Opening Sale. It's his greatest grand opening sale ever, going on now at all eleven great locations with prices, prices that, that are insane. insane. I think Crazy Eddie put the word insane into our vocabulary. Here's another store that I kind of miss. Hi, there's great excitement during Sweezy's department store. Salute to the Caribbean 92nd birthday sale. Yeah, Sweezy's. I think they had three locations: Patchog, Riverhead, and Isa Talkit. And they did have some sort of a jingle at the end. I think they sang Sweezy's, where shopping is a pleasure. And what about this one? Caldor. Bring home the difference. Caldor. I probably bought a little bit of everything in that store. And finally, this one. They even paid Joe Namath to endorse it. Thanks to you, nobody beats the Wiz. Nobody beats the Wiz. Nobody beats the Wiz. It's the Wiz. That's where I bought my first digital camera. There are literally hundreds of stores on Long Island that are no more. What were some of your favorites? You can comment on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. And finally, this girl drama. I don't get it. I wish someone would be able to explain to me precisely why it's so much more prevalent in a young girl's life, and it's not in a young boy's life. I remember people warning me about drama, girl drama, when my daughter was seven. Just wait until she's fourteen, and I thought, wait for what? Now I know exactly what they were talking about. And I was lulled into a false sense of security when my boys were approaching their teenage years. It seemed to be a piece of cake. But when my daughter turned thirteen, fourteen, watch out. Matter of fact, I did a little research online, and if you type in the words "girl drama" in Google, you'll get a million hits. How to help your daughter deal with friend drama? I gave my daughter the tools she needs when girl drama strikes. Girl drama: The Grit and Grace Project. How to teach your daughter to handle girl drama in nine steps. This one, after that, has eight steps. Girl drama: When it's time to let a friendship end. Oh my gosh! I overheard a conversation from one of my son's friends, and this person was a girl, and she was telling him all about this very, very, very. Very close friend that she had for years, and suddenly, in the blink of an eye, now they weren't friends anymore. How does that happen? I mean, maybe from an adult standpoint, you have a disagreement with a really close friend, dust settles, you work out your differences, and life moves on with the same friend. But with girls, it's almost like jumping off a cliff. No more. It's done. Nada. Don't go there anymore. And it's become fairly common to hear about the drama at school when my daughter returns home. 
This one's not talking to that one. Why? I don't know. This one isn't talking to me anymore. They won't even look at me. Why? I don't know. There's a lot of mystery that goes into girl drama. The I don't knows may very well be things they don't want to tell you, or maybe they don't know. That's what makes it more confusing for us adults. And then what's even stranger, two months goes by and they'll say, oh, so-and-so is going to come over for a sleepover. You good with that? And I thought that so-and-so was somebody that wasn't talking to you, so why are they coming back to our house for a sleepover? I don't know. I've been told to be really patient about this and always lend an ear and support when they ask you to. And I think I have. The last time somebody advised me to be patient as a parent that this too will pass was when my middle child, Brian, was a couple of months old and became colic. The pediatrician looked at a calendar pointed to, I forget how many weeks into the future, he said, by then it will be over. So hang in there. And when that day actually came, colic was done. It was like he was psychic or something, or maybe just a medically trained professional with lots of experience in colic. So I'm wondering, when will the drama end? I could go back to that pediatrician, now retired, and say, can you point to a date on the calendar when the drama <laughs> will be over? I think most parents will agree that by the time your kid gets to college, the drama is over. What about you? Do you have a drama queen? And when did it end? And how did you survive? I appreciate your comments on Facebook, Instagram, or you can email me at breakfastwithmarkdaniels at gmail.com. And that'll do it for this episode of Breakfast with Mark Daniels, available on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and buzzsprout.com. We'd love to have you advertise with us and grow your business. Just send me an email at breakfastwithmarkdaniels at gmail.com. Don't forget to like, don't forget to share, and don't forget to be back tomorrow for another episode of Breakfast with Mark Daniels. Have a great day.